The word fascism and fascist has become almost meaningless in current political debate. Both modern right and left accuse each other of being fascist. Few, however, really know what fascism is. In this video, using the works of Giovanni Gentile and Benito Mussolini himself, we will expand the political philosophy of fascism as it really is. Fascism could be defined as status national syndicalism with the philosophy of actualism. National syndicalism is a nationalistic interpretation of syndicalism. Syndicalism as a whole was an international left-wing movement. The main goal of syndicalists was the unification of the working class in trade unions, whose main goal was the defense and expansion of working class interests and rights. Syndicalism could be thus defined as trade unionism. Most of the syndicalist interpretations were international or anarchistic. National syndicalism, however, was all about protecting and uniting people of one nation in the syndicates instead of pushing for worldwide labor unification. Fascists themselves acknowledge their socialist origins. Giovanni Gentile in Origins and Doctrine of Fascism wrote, It is necessary to distinguish between socialism and socialism. In fact, between idea and idea of the same socialist conception, in order to distinguish among them those that are inimical to fascism, it is well known that Sorlean syndicalism, out of which the thought and the political method of fascism emerge, conveys itself the, the genuine interpretation of Marxist communism. The dynamic conception of history, in which force as violence functions as an essential, is of the unquestioned Marxist origin. Those notions flowed into other currents of contemporary thought, that have themselves, via alternative roads, arrive at the vindication of the form of state, implacable but absolutely rational, that finds historic necessity in the very spiritual dynamism through which it realizes itself. As we can clearly see, fascists themselves recognize and acknowledge their left-wing syndicalism origins and present themselves as the socialists. They also are of the opinion that violence itself isn't a negative phenomena by itself and in fact is the driving force of history and is thus the positive phenomenon that needs to be utilized by the state. Positive or at least neutral view of violence is another element essential in fascist doctrine. Violence is not seen by a fascist as something negative but is the force of progress and is needed in order for a state to function. Fascism holds the state in a special regard. For fascists, the state itself isn't a social construct, nor it is an institution. It is an organic body and the individuals cannot exist in the separation with it. Just as the cells of the organism cannot survive outside the body, the individual cannot exist outside of the state. The concept of individual and the state are thus inseparable for the fascists. For fascism, the state and the individual are one, or better perhaps state and individual are terms that are inseparable in the necessary synthesis. The trade unions in fascist philosophy are the means of the embodiment of the people in a nation. The economic policy of fascism is the one of state corporatism. A fascist corporation is a government body that brings together federations of workers and employers, syndicates belonging to the same profession and branch, to regulate production in a holistic manner. Each trade union would theoretically represent its professional concerns, especially by negotiation of labor contracts and the like. It was theorized that this method could result in harmony among social classes. Fascists, as all socialists do, recognize the class struggle, yet in contrast to Marxist and most other socialist movements, they do not wish to exploit it in order to take power and establish collective ownership of the means of production. They want to prevent the class struggle, as they see an infighting within the nation as a poison polluting the blood of a collective organism. The fascist corporations at the same time protect the interests of the working class and the private ownership of a means of production. 
This prevents a class struggle since the interests of both workers and capitalists are safeguarded and protected. In this way, another important concept of fascist philosophy presents itself, the unitarism. The fascist unitarism is a simple idea that could be described in a nutshell as united we stand, divided we fall. Fascists are totalitarian because they want to enforce the unity of the nation and corporatistic system of economic governance regardless of the opinion and the will of the individuals. Because the interest of a collective body is more important than the cells of the organism. However, the fascist idea of totalitarianism is vastly different from that usually comes to mind. When brought within the orbit of the state, fascism recognizes the real needs which gave rise to socialism and trade unionism, giving them due weight in the guild or cooperative system in which divergent interests are coordinated and harmonized in the unity of the state. The state is not simply a mechanism which limits the sphere of the supposed liberties of the individual. Neither has the fascist concept of authority anything in common with that of police rather than state. Far from crushing the individual, the fascist state multiplies his energies. Just as in a regiment, a soldier is not demissed, but multiplied by the number of his fellow soldiers. The fascists do not want to create a police state that will suppress the individual. They want to create a total state that will utilize individuals to their full potential for the collective interest of the people of the state, or nation, since in fascism both are inseparable from each other. Fascist definition of freedom is vastly different from the one presented in liberal thought. Of which liberalism does one wish to speak? I distinguish two principal forms of liberalism. For one, liberty is a right. For the other, a duty. For one, it is a gift. For the other, a conquest. One liberalism convinces liberty rooted in the individual and therefore opposes the individual to the state. A state understood as possessing not intrinsic value, but exclusively serving the well-being and improvement on the individual. The state is seen as a means, not an end. It limits itself to the maintenance of public order, excluding itself from the entirety of spiritual life, which therefore remains exclusively a sphere restricted to the individual concerns. That liberalism, historically, is classical liberalism of English manufacture. It is, we must recognize, a false liberalism, containing only half the truth. It was opposed among us by Masiani with a criticism that I maintain is immortal. But there is another liberalism that matured in Italian and German thought that holds entirely absurd this view of antagonism between the state and the individual. For the fascist, Liberty is not a goal, but is the means towards the goal of the state. In a fascist philosophy, since the state is the one that grants rights and freedoms to the individual, the liberal concept of individual freedom is merely a social construct. The only true freedom is the one of the state to impose its will and take action. The action is the last truly essential part of the fascist philosophy. The fascists, on the other hand, convinces philosophy as a philosophy of practice. That concept was the product of certain Marxist and Sorolian inspirations. Many fascists and the Duce himself received their first intellectual education in the school of Marx and Sorrel, as well as the influence of the contemporary Italian idealistic doctrines from which fascists mentally drew substance and achieved maturity. Mussolini simplified Giovanni's thought and said that fascism is action. The concept of actualism is the one of great importance in fascist philosophy. For fascists, life is a struggle in which he is forced to overcome difficulties with action and will. Thus, an action taken is always better than standing idle. And that's it. This is what fascism, according to fascists themselves, is. Many of you may think that fascism in its essence, it's also racist and discriminatory. However, it's simply incorrect. Mussolini's stance compared with, for example, Hitler is quite clear. Race. It is a feeling, not a reality. 
95% at least is a feeling. Nothing will ever make me believe that biologically poor rations can be shown to exist today. National pride has no need for the delirium of race. One may argue that in 1938, fascist Italy imposed discriminatory laws against Jewish people. However, such action was purely politically motivated and its main goal was to please Hitler and Nazi Germany. It had nothing to do with the actual philosophy of fascism. Additionally, the anti-Jewish laws of 1938 were actually not that restrictive and many Italian Jews were unaffected by them. Italy also directly became a safe haven for many Jews during World War II, and only 6,000 Jews were deported before Germans de facto occupied Northern Italy in 1943. Before 1943, not a single Italian Jew died because of the anti-Jewish laws. Fascism also isn't anti-democratic. The great example of that may be Oswald's Mosley version of fascism, in which both democratic institutions and free elections exist. believe that government by talk must at last give place to government by action. We believe that we cannot muddle through this time. But we also believe that with effort and with organization, this country can be greater and more prosperous than ever before. We do not propose dictatorship because the control of an elected parliament is still retained. But we do propose a drastic revision of the parliamentary machine in order that the will of the people may be carried out. Giovanni also claimed that, in fact, fascist state is a form of democratic one. The authority of the state was not a product, but a presupposition. It could not depend on the people, in fact, the people depended on the state. The fascist state, on the other hand, is a popular state, and, in that sense, a democratic state par excellence. Every citizen shares a relationship with the state and is, so, intimate that the state exists only insofar as it is made to exist by the citizen. So, to sum up, fascism is the statish, unitary, national syndicalism with the philosophy of actualism, positive or at least neutral view on violence, which in fascist philosophy is the dynamic driving force of history. It is incredibly collectivist and nationalistic. It isn't, in its essence, however, racist, discriminatory, anti-democratic or anti-Semitic. It could and often had proposed such things as cult of strange, respect of traditional family values and traditional gender roles. There are of course numerous concerns about the philosophy of fascism, such as the fact that the leaders of the state might not have the best collective interest of the na nation in mind and instead use their positions for a personal gain effectively creating a corrupted, oppressive kleptocracy. If you made it so far, thank you, dear viewer. I hope that now you understand what fascism really is and what it isn't. Despite what some may claim, fascism is an extremely complex political philosophy. We only discuss the most important fraction of it in this video. If you are interested in knowing more about fascism and making the Duce feel proud, then let me know in the comments and subscribe to the channel since this isn't the last video about fascism on this channel. See you next time.